It's all aboard Royal Princess, one of the world's largest luxury cruise ships. Oh, I haven't been on one that big before. As crew and passengers set sail around the Mediterranean. I love a good adventure. <laughs> With cruising more popular than ever and a choice of over 130 competing cruise ships, we like to have a certain element of, of, of class. <laughs> Being second best is not an option. How many whales will there be outside the ship and what side will they be on today? With 4,000 passengers all expecting five-star service. No pressure. The crew of 1,400 must cope when the unexpected happens. It's a train smash, but this is what happens on ships, you know? It's very unpredictable. <laughs> This time... This is not even going to last ten minutes. Chef David feels the pressure as supplies threaten to run out. You never have a day where everything is smooth. Never. The competition hots up as passengers nominate their favourite staff. Thank you for all you do. I can't believe you guys got me this. <laughs> and one of the ship's most important instruments goes wrong. Royal Princess is in Italy, in one of the largest Mediterranean ports, Livorno, on the coast of Tuscany. As passengers take breakfast this morning, they have no idea that behind the scenes, executive chef David has a looming problem with one of his crucial stocks. We're running short of uh, orange juice, which is, a, which is a, a crisis. It's something that's offered complimentary on board, and if I don't have it... <laughs> We're going to have a 4,000 people kick up here. Bien! He heads down to the stores on deck three to find out how big a problem he's got. Come, show me the orange, please. They need enough for the whole cruise, but can only restock at major ports. This is not even going to last 10 minutes. Why didn't you come and tell me three days ago? Yes, one orange juice and one apple juice. An oversight in ordering means they're now down to the last 150 litres. It's like a number one drink in the morning. Start your morning with orange juice, it make you healthy, happy, and uh, make all your day. <laughs> what really gets to me is, is the fact that they wait until everything's out, and then they come and say, oh, well, there's no orange juice. I'm not a magician, I can't just pull oranges from somewhere. For now, it's breakfast as normal. But if Chef David can't get more oranges, a drought is looming. Down on deck seven, staff are facing challenges of a canine variety. Go boy. Go boy. Left, left. Animals aren't normally allowed on the ship, but this cruise has six guide dogs, accompanying a group of blind and partially sighted passengers. Hello, ladies and gents. It's Susan. Hello, sweetheart. Everyone on board has to have a safety drill, and the dogs are no exception. Task falls to head of security, Susan. We can't sail unless the dog has a life jacket. If we were to go to a lifeboat and just say, for instance, the dog fell into the water, the whole purpose of this is to have a handle here and you can lift the dog out the water. As staff go that extra mile for their four-legged passengers, on the shore excursions desk, Timothy is being rewarded for his customer service. How was today? Very good, actually. Lovely trip. Yeah? Lovely did you like that? I did. Did you bring your other tickets? I did bring the old tickets, and that is a thank you. What? Thank you for jumping. Yes. No, you didn't have to do that. I can't believe you guys got me this. <laughs> I was able to get them on a tour, so then they came and got me some chocolate. <laughs> Gratitude is great, but there's a much bigger accolade and prizes to be won in the Employees of the Month staff competition. As the competition hots up, Hello. Hotel General Manager Craig is in charge of collecting the passenger feedback. One member from each department will win. This is a program in which passengers can fill out nomination forms and pass them on to the front desk. And we use those nomination forms to identify crew members who have done special things for our passengers. Madam, the coffee machine is broken currently. One contender is popular bartender Campbell, who this morning is grappling with a broken coffee grinder in the International Cafe. The bean clogged the machine. So I'm using a very high-tech system, a spoon. 
As a queue of passengers backs up, Campbell's feeling the pressure. Everybody wants a coffee. So. Holiday in paradise. <laughs> He's eager for positive feedback from passengers. No, nope, broken. As his boss, bar manager Michael, is reviewing his nominations this month. Campbell has outstanding service at Bellini's and International Cafe. Very enjoyed the customer service of both the Bellini's bar and the cafe. He has great personality, accommodating and knew what we wanted each night. So, yeah, very good. It's nice when somebody has recognised you and wrote a nice little comment. Yeah, it means a lot, it means a lot to me. Luckily for Campbell, the cavalry's arrived with a replacement borrowed from Deck 7. Crisis over, the staff are waiting to hear who's going to win at the special Employees of the Month award ceremony tomorrow. On the bridge, officers are getting ready to depart from Livorno. And there's one princess tradition Captain Bob Oliver is determined to keep. When we are departing, just to keep things brief, I normally call out to the guys on the centre line, give some love. The love is a tune played on the ship's horns. Half mile on the race. It's a homage to classic 70s American TV series, The Love Boat, which was set aboard a princess cruise ship. The only slight issue we have it is that uh, one of the notes is a little bit flat. It's meant to be the ship's anthem, but instead of being a proud fanfare, it's become a very public cacophony, and Captain Bob's had enough. There's always a collective cringe when you hit that dud note. The problem is, the cause is a mystery, and solving it will be a difficult and dangerous job for the ship's engineers. I'm not absolutely sure that they can fix it, but to get up there, they have to get up the funnel up to where the whistles are actually positioned, so it's not a particularly easy job. Captain Bob wants the problem fixed, and it'll have to be done tomorrow in port at Genoa. It's a port which holds a special appeal for Timothy, and he's determined to look his best. I don't know. Did you bring your key? Yeah. Time for a trip to the staff laundrette with Jordan from the front desk. The thing about doing crew laundry, there's only three. Three wash, three dry. So then you switch them around. I'll switch your room. But I always, I always put it in, oh. but I never actually um, dry it because <laughs> if someone dried my laundry, I would die. I would <laughs> absolutely die. Because you know how it like your short shorts would get a lot short, <laughs> <laughs> like way too short. <laughs> oh my goodness! Don't put that on. <laughs> That girl is scandalous. <laughs> Tomorrow's port, Genoa, is the gateway to Milan. For Timothy, the job is to learn firsthand about the excursions he sells. But it's a perfect chance to mix work with pleasure. Seriously, I've never been to Milan, and I've been wanting to go there since I was a little kid. Why? Because it's Milan. It's like fashion capital of the world. Yeah, it's not so really like a capital. Models. Oh, it's not like... <laughs> You're going to be walking down the street like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a catalog. I want to see if I can turn some heads. <laughs> but with that laugh, you'll turn a lot of heads. <laughs> Timothy may be looking forward to tomorrow, but there's one person on board who is dreading it. Crisis! Crisis on the way! It's looking like orange juice for breakfast will be off the menu. And for the moment, Chef David doesn't want word leaking out. Suddenly, everybody's going to be running for orange juice. Orange juice! You know what I mean? Before the storm hits, grab a gear here, and they'll be taking orange... If they know about it, they'll be taking cups of orange juice down to their cabins. Just think, oh, I've got my orange juice for breakfast tomorrow morning. I'm all right. <laughs> Royal Princess is arriving into Genoa on the Italian Riviera. Up with the plan, the speed is the wind, now it's 30 knots, as expected. With the breakfast rush hour about to start and hardly any orange juice left, Chef David is worried about complaints from passengers. Basically, that's my... That's where I'm at. Once that goes, I'm, I'm gone. That's about 200 portions... Uh, about 100... 100 little glasses. That. So once that's gone, we're gone. 
Finish. If it's breakfast time, you cannot run out of orange juice. That's like running out of air at breakfast time. <laughs> Chef David has a dilemma on his hands. I've got to come up with some kind of alternative. We're in a bit of trouble, and I can't squeeze uh, fresh oranges for uh, 4,000 people. Ain't going to happen. I just don't have the manpower, and I don't have the uh, fresh oranges to do that kind of thing. In his early morning meeting with galley department heads, the supplies crisis is top of the agenda. We're going to offer fruit juices, different fruit juices. Guava, mango, passion fruits is available. OK, we all understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Freshly squeezed orange juice will be available on demand for passengers, but it'll be a case of family hold back. In the officer's mess, there's no more fresh orange. Finished. Don't give it. They can come and see me, they can cry, they can jump up and down. I don't have, I'm sorry, I have to... Uh, passengers first. What's going on? No orange juice. In the breakfast buffet, passengers are experimenting. And changing the habits of a lifetime. I haven't tried cranberry yet, so I'll give it a go. It's been in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, may do for one more day. They've got away with it, just. On deck 19, it's time to fix the horns. Too dangerous to mend at sea, they have to finish the job before leaving port. I've been especially uh, asked by the captain to investigate the distortion in the noise of the Princess Love Boat's melody, OK? Staff engineer Gaetano has assembled a team he hopes is up to the task. It means climbing four storeys up the ship's funnel. This is one job that has a special significance for Gaetano. I used to watch when I was a children. I was watching this TV show, The Love Boats, dreaming to work on or cruise on uh, Princess passenger ships. As a technically minded person, I say, you know, one day I can be part of that team. And now here we are uh, fixing the melody on uh, <laughs> one of the most beautiful princess ships. That's uh, my dream coming true. With the first of the horns dismantled, Gaetano hopes he's found the solution to the dud note. The only moving parts that can really affect the sound wave is this membrane. As you can see here, we got a bit of dirt on the membrane itself. So what we're going to do, we're going to clean it off and uh, leave it nice and lubricated, and we're going to fit back the cover. And hopefully, we got it right. They'll have to clean all seven horns, but if Gaetano's hunch is right, they'll finally be in tune. Down in his office, Chef David prepares to face the rest of his day. Oh, I need to scream. But, you know, my day never... You never have a day where everything is smooth, never on board. We have challenges, hurdles, all day. But you know, it is what it is. This is, uh, this is the delights of, uh, of working on a cruise liner. This is what makes it so um, interesting, challenging all the time. You've got to rise above it. <laughs> I've got to find a solution for orange juice. And that's it, period. Catering for the creature comforts of the guide dogs on board falls to housekeeping supervisor Roselle who's made special dog litters for them. This is the area where we provide for the dogs, for, the, for their box, so they can do their business, poop, pee, and then everything is provided for them. We put also the cabin number so they know which box they belong to and they don't fight. <laughs> We've definitely got our exercise walking from, um, from our room to take her to the potty. Let me, I'll hold it. Look what we got today, my son. Five cards. The Employees of the Month competition is drawing ever closer. Around the ship, department heads are assessing the passenger nominations. And for Chef David, one name is jumping out. Chef Thomas said, relax, enjoy your meal, and nothing was impossible. I can believe that. Huh? Executive sous chef Thomas is his second in command and a big character in the five restaurants he runs. That's fine, that's excellent now, huh? Yeah, man. You know, the little bit of salt makes a big difference, huh? 
This is a guy who, who has no problems going out no matter what and speaking to guests. He's so friendly and open. All right. See you later, girls. I enjoy interacting with people and I enjoy cooking. Those are my two passions. He's got one of the greatest personalities that I've seen on a chef. And that's a win-win situation for us. Like all the nominees, Thomas has no idea he's even in the running. But if he wins, the prize will be a much-cherished day off work. Beautiful. Beautiful. All the nominations are in, and Hotel General Manager Craig is meeting other department heads for a secret vote to decide winners. What we're focusing on specifically for the for the winners are, you know, someone that has created a, a special moment for the passengers. As before, where the voting sheet is completed with uh, pictures and also a small synopsis of their nominations. The votes have been cast, and now it's just a matter of counting them. I think we have some winners emerging. It's getting close. Ashore, Timothy is on his fact-finding trip to Milan. It's a two-hour coach ride, and he can barely contain his excitement. Holy cow. The tour he's on costs 68 pounds, and his job is to sample it as if he was a paying customer. This is amazing. I have the worst job in the world. I tried to be trendy because it's Milan. I know, I was thinking the same. And I, this is all I got. <laughs> The excursion includes a guided tour around the city's historic sites and exclusive shopping areas. I'm just going to shop at all of these, you know? Louis, Prada, Versace. Holy cow, this is amazing. Hello. Timothy is meeting Yami, a former shore excursion colleague who now lives nearby. A chance to pick up some local knowledge. So, what is a local food that you would try and eat here. There is one, it's called cotoletta. Cotoletta? Alla milanese. Alla milanese. And it's like no. breaded, uh, <laughs> it's like breaded chicken, pretty much. Oh, OK. I'm going to have a pizza. <laughs> Yo, pizza a alla pizza. Thank you. With only a day to pack in all of Milan's sites, Timothy's starting to feel the pressure of absorbing all the information he's been given. Right now, I'm struggling. Like, I find it hard yeah. to learn all of the different ports. It'll get easier by the end of the season. Yeah. While Timothy catches 40 winks on the return to Genoa... Good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Who's ready to win some money? Back on board, Deputy Cruise Director Toby is leading a bingo game. And with specially designed Braille cards, Elaine from Texas is playing to win. Oh, 66. Oh, finally. <laughs> All the sixes, oh, 66. All right, go back to the bees now. OK, I'll try. <laughs> Next one. G50, 5 and 0, 50. Are you married, Toby? Am I married? Yeah. No. OK, that's mine. You don't know how to follow instructions. <gasps> <laughs> Fine, I'm the boss. I give the instructions. <laughs> I didn't win, but I had fun. And that's the, that's the most part. If you can't win, have fun. With departure scheduled in an hour, on deck 19, Gaetano and his engineers are hoping they've fixed the horns. Bridge, bridge, uh, staff engineer. Staff engineer, bridge. Yes, go ahead and test the whistle. Thank you. There's no keeping quiet about it if it hasn't worked. Wow, fantastic job. Good, good. Good job. Thank you. Fantastic. Very happy. Sounds great. Really does. With the horns back on song, it's time to give a fanfare to the employees of the month as the entire crew gathers for the results. This is an important event in the crew calendar, and all heads of departments, including Captain Bob, are here. Thank you so much for the incredible job that all of you do each and every day. It's a big moment for nominees Chef Thomas and bartender Campbell. All right, representing the galley department, Thomas Galley, come on up. <laughs> galley department, galley is his last name, that works well. Yes, our shyest crew member on board. 
has, never has anything to say. It says, Thomas, you have been recognized for delivering a guest experience that truly created a lasting memory. This is really good. And ladies and gentlemen, the face of the International Cafe, the bar department, Mr. Campbell Wilson. Nice little surprise. I didn't know it was uh, happening today. So, yeah, very happy. A $50 cash prize, a day off from work. Complimentary dinner and one night in the state room. This is the best I've won like in many, many, many years. I'm proud of this. It means a lot to me because uh, I love my job. So it's nice to be, re you know, recognized. So yeah. Thank you again for coming. Thank you for all you do, and we wish you all a fantastic day. We'll see you later. Thanks so much. Campbell and Thomas can now both look forward to a day off work. As the ship's horns herald another departure, Royal Princess leaves Genoa and heads down to the Greek islands. Next time, a breakdown in the laundry threatens a mountain of dirty washing. This has built up just in the last four hours. All right! Well, hello and welcome. Toby takes charge of all passenger entertainment for the first time. Hi, hello. I'm getting all this attention and I quite like it. <laughs> and the ship's fine dining reputation is on the line. Tonight, it's my menu. I know that the result is a bit of a disappointment. Thank you.